Okay, so in this lesson we're going to take a look at normal distribution and how it applies to the standard deviation that we were just taking a look at. So, it has been discovered that many observations of physical measurements such as length, volume, mass, time, and others all have common characteristics in how their data is distributed. The examples shown below, or below show histograms developed from data with these common characteristics. So if you look at the weight of infants, then we can see that there's some that are very low, but most of them will stack up closer into this middle region. If we take a look at the time taken to complete an assignment, then some people will take way less time, some people will take way more time than the average, but most people will fit into that average around the same amount of time. And if we talk about the height of students, the same thing. We can have major outliers on either side, but most students are going to be in about the same range of heights. So what we're going to do first is we're going to draw a frequency polygram, or polygon by connecting all the midpoints at the top of each bar with a smooth curve. Well, for the weight of infants, it's not even going to curve. This one is basically just going to be a straight line and then come through here and I get a straight line looking like that. If I'm doing the time taken to complete an assignment I just connect all the points and it looks something like that. And if I am trying to do the height of students, I'm going to start at zero again, and I'm going to just connect, going to trying to get as close as possible to the center of the bars. And I get something that looks like that. In each case, the frequency polygon of the data results in a bell shape which we typically refer to as the bell curve. So when we talk about normal distribution, data which may result in a frequency polygon with a bell-shaped curve is said to be normally distributed. The curve is referred to as the normal distribution curve, normal curve, or most commonly, the bell curve, and is widely used in making predictions and statistics. So here's an example of the bell curve where Here's the average data, and then it should break down evenly going on either side. So, if we're trying to understand the normal distribution curve by investigation, the normal distribution curve can best be understood by a concrete example. A manufacturer who makes 100 watt light bulbs for Glowbright Inc. is interested in determining the distribution of the lifetime of the bulbs. After testing 44 bulbs, he calculates the mean life of the bulbs to be about 900 hours, and the standard deviation is going to be about 50 hours. The lifetimes in hours of the 44 bulbs tested are shown below. So here's the data sets for all 44. If the mean and standard deviation is approximately mu is 900 and sigma is 50, then here is the histogram data. So all I did was just take all those data sets and just put it into ranges. This was from 750 to 800, and there's one case of that. This is from 800 to 850, and there's six cases. For both the 850 to 900, and 900 to 950, there's 15 cases of each of them. Then 950 to 1000, there were six cases, and 1000 to 1050, there was one case once again. We're going to use this data in order to complete the table. Well, first, we've already said that for the first set, we had one piece of data that actually fit into there. In the second set, we had six. In the third and fourth sets up here, we had 15 in both of them. In this fifth set, we had six again. And in the sixth set, we had one. Now, if we had 
44 total examples, then I'm going to say, well, the percentage of bulbs that fit in this range is going to be 1 over 44, which equals 2.27%. And this one is going to be 6 out of 44, which would give me 13.6%, or 13.64%, if I want to be a little bit more specific. This one, it's already told us on the right-hand side here, 15 divided by 44 is going to equal 34.09%. This one we've done in the second set, 6 divided by 44 is equal to 13.64%, and 1 divided by 44 is equal to 2.27%. When we get to example C, it says, using the fact that mu, or the mean, is 900 and the standard deviation is 50, write the following numbers in terms of mu and sigma. Well, this one would be 50 away from 900, so I could say that that is the same as mu plus one sigma. 900 plus 50 is going to equal 950. Which means that if this was 50 less than 900, this would be the same as mu minus sigma. If this is 900 minus 100, that would be mu minus two sigmas. And if this is 150 more than 900, this would be the same as mu plus three sigmas, or three standard deviations. If I'm putting this into the data values, well, I know that right in the center of this curve is going to be that average. It's going to be 900 then one line up is going to be 950, then 1000, then 1050. On this side, it's going to be 850, 800, and 750. How many standard deviations away from the mean? Well, this is the mean, so it's zero standard deviations away. This one is going to be two away. This is going to be three away. This is going to be moving negative one. This is going to be moving negative two. And this is going to be moving negative three. What is the actual value of this in terms of mu and sigma? Well, the 900 is just mu. 950 was mu plus sigma, which means that this would be mu plus two sigmas. And this one we solved in the last example, mu plus three sigmas. Which means this would be mu minus sigma, mu minus two sigmas, and mu minus three sigmas. And what percentage of the data actually fits into here? Well, this was 30.09%. This is 34.09%. This one was 13.64%. And this one is 13.64%. This was 2.27%. And this one is 2 percent. The curve is based on one particular example and is a good approximation for the standard normal distribution curve shown on the next page. So this one is just a possible case for how much percentage of the data. If we had more than 44 examples, say we did 10,000 examples, all of these percentages would be much more accurate. 